welcome to episode 68 of the PMDT Buyers Club. This is our second take today of 68 because I'm using my wife's phone here to brew my tea. I'm using the timer on it and then it popped up. I gave a shout out to one of her friends, but uh, I was told that I wasn't allowed to mention it, you know? So when I see that particular friend, I'll let them know. Anyway, coming on to episode 68, I've just got to turn this off and because it's a three minute timer. I'm doing the tea that we tried in episode 67, uh, the handmade tea. That's in fact going up this week. Uh, so make sure you check that out. I'm just gonna give that a little stir. It's been three minutes and I'm gonna pull that out. Look at that cup color, very light. Give, let that brew for a little longer and try this one out. I'll let that sit. Episode 68 today is going to be a little different. We're not reviewing this tea, we've already done it. If you want to go and see this, go watch episode 66. Today's episode is answering customer questions. I think the last time we did this was episode 24, when someone had some questions about uh, Assam tea. Today's one actually talks about the quiz that we did on Instagram yesterday. So we're going to do a quiz. Uh, right now it's looking like a week. If it gets really popular. And I'll, 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 I'll put a thing out on Instagram to say, you know, do you guys want to do it more often? We can do it, you know, twice a week or whatever while we're in lockdown. So today's one is actually about yesterday's quiz because there were some people who were asking some questions about why this and why that. So I thought, why not use today's episode? So this is actually out to, uh, to a few of the customers who wrote in asking some of the questions. So question number one we asked is who is credited with creating afternoon tea? Now your options were, Anna, Duchess of Bedford, Anna, Duchess of Bradford, Queen Latifah, and Mr. T. There were some people who hit Queen Latifah. There was also an individual who hit Mr. T. Uh, that is the Mr. T, the infamous Mr. T from Rocky III and also from the A-Team. Um, it was neither of those two. Um, afternoon tea has been going on for a lot longer than, uh, than, than both Queen Latifah and Mr. T have been around for. So it really is down to either Bradford or Bedford, um, and it was actually Anna, Duchess of Bedford. Question number two, the first tea that came to Europe came from, your options were China, India, Sri Lanka, and Indonesia. The answer there was China. A lot of you thought that it was India. Um, actually, the Chinese have been drinking tea for the past 5,000 years. So China is actually where the first tea came uh, to Europe from. Question number three, which company had a virtual monopoly on the China tea trade? The East India Company, the Hudson Bay Company, the British South Africa Company, and the India Ceylon Company? Well, just by, there was a few people who hit Hudson Bay and, and India Ceylon. No one hit the British South Africa Company. All three of those companies were actually charter companies that were set up, the East India, the Hudson Bay, and the British South Africa. India Ceylon Company is one that I actually made up. I don't even know if that exists, but a lot of you hit that. That company, I don't even know if it exists. Hudson Bay was actually involved in trappings and furs in North America and Canada. British South Africa Company, as the name says on the tin, was involved in uh, South Africa and what is today Zimbabwe and Zambia. And the, it's the East India Company that started life, you know, in uh, on the south coast of India, known as John Company, that actually had a virtual monopoly of this, uh, of, of this tea trade out of China. Question number four. When tea arrived from China, where did ships dock? Now, your options were London, Portsmouth, Liverpool, and Southampton. My good friend Tom Meal, of course, hit Southampton because he's a big Saints fan, um, and he was wrong. Many of you thought it was Portsmouth. Again, it was not Portsmouth, and some of you thought it was London. There wasn't a huge, uh, there wasn't a huge uh, number of people who actually hit London. Most of you thought it was either Portsmouth or Southampton. Portsmouth, although it's a famous port, is actually a Royal Navy port, so no commercial goods came through. But when tea first came to Britain, it actually came into the, into the London docks. And if you have a look at a tube map, you'd see East India Dock, West India Dock. All these teas actually came into the east end of London. Um, they actually docked there. There was a company known as St. Catherine's Dock Company, which in 18, between 1834 and 1836 had a virtual monopoly of, uh, of docking of tea into, into London. So London was the, was the correct answer. Liverpool later on actually became one of uh, Britain's largest, uh, largest ports where it actually took a lot of uh, cotton out of Lancashire and shipped it back to India. So, uh, so and not just to India, but, but right across the empire. But the answer is London. It was also London because from these ports, from the docks, they would be taken up to uh, Mincing Lane where a, lot of the, where a lot of the tea firms were, which is where, also where the London tea auctions used to happen. So. It was in the east end of London, also where that was bombed during the Blitz. 
Super team. Wonderful. Go watch episode 66 to learn about this. Question number five. The, tea, the Indian tea plant is different to the Chinese one. This was true or false? Well, the answer is true. And so I'm going I'm to touch more on this one because this is, this is one that, that, that a lot of people wrote in about. Why is the Indian tea plant different? Well, first and foremost, the botanical name for tea is Camellia sinensis. And there's two types of Camellia sinensis that we use commercially in tea plantations. One of them is known as Camellia sinensis sinensis. The other one is known as Camellia sinensis assamica. Sinensis sinensis is the China Jat, the Sinensis Assamica is the India Jat. Jat is actually a Hindi word uh, which means caste, it means type. So you've got Chinese variety, Camellia sinensis sinensis, and Indian variety, uh, Sinensis Assamica. Sinensis sinensis was found uh, in China, Sinensis Assamica was found in the region of Assam, and uh, you, you still use the, the you, you still use these plants even today. It's very easy to, to see the difference between an Indian variety of tea plant to a Chinese one. The Indian variety has a much broader and larger leaf. Uh, so it's a much larger leaf uh, that they have. The Chinese variety plants are much smaller and they have a serrated edge. So if you're ever in upcountry Sri Lanka, um, if you're ever, you know, if you're go going through Bitcoin, Norwood Tea Estate, you can always uh, notice an N2 if you pass Norwood Tea Estate, they have a lot of N2 clones. That comes from, from China, comes from China Jat, and that has a small leaf, has a, has a serrated edge to it, um, and it gives a lot of flavor when you make tea with it. You can make black tea and green tea from both tea bushes, but on the whole, Indian tea bushes, the Assamica leaf, um, gives you a thicker, stronger, more brisker cup. The Chinese variety gives you much more character, gives you much more aroma. Um, and is better at making a green tea. It has a lot more flavor to it. But in Sri Lanka, we actually grow both um, side by side. Certain regions you won't. So for example, in Assam, they will exclusively grow Assam, uh, Assam bushes. In Darjeeling, complete opposite, they actually use uh, the, the Chinese variety tea plants in Darjeeling, not any of the Assam uh, varieties. So there is a difference and that's what it is. Moving on to the next question six, which Indian region grew tea first? Your options were Assam, Darjeeling, Nilgiri, and Sikkim. A lot of you guys got confused. There was, there was a split. Uh, I think more people actually went for the wrong answer than for the right one. The answer there was Assam. Assam was, uh, was the first region that was planted in India. And maybe I'll do another video on, on, the, on the history of tea so we can touch on that. But Assam grew tea before Darjeeling. You know, it's all down to that story of the Assam bush, actually, why they grew tea before Darjeeling. Question number seven. Young tea bushes are found growing in A. Options were crash, daddy daycare center, nursery, and a glass house. Thankfully, no one actually hit the option of a daddy daycare center, so well done. Um, crash, nursery, and glass house were, the, were, were, were where a, a lot of your votes went. The answer was actually a nursery. So tea plants are actually, you know, grown in a nursery, especially today, if you go to a commercial plantation, they use a lot of vegetably propagated uh, bushes. This is where they take, you know, a particular bush, they look at certain characteristics in that bush, maybe it's drought resistant, maybe it gives high yield, maybe it has a better flavor, and they will, they will take cuttings from that bush, they'll propagate those in the nursery, and, you know, uh, months later, they will take these bushes into the field and replant them into, into new sections of tea field. So the answer is nursery. Well done to everyone who got that one right. Question number eight, the first, oh, I can't even read my own, my own uh, writing. The first stage of black tea production is withering, rolling, and drying. Um, big split here was either between withering and drying. For black tea, you hand pick your tea, you wither it, you roll it, you roll break, you then oxidize, and then you send it to the dryer to take out the moisture. So first stage is withering. Question number nine, when fine, uh, when, whoa, whoa, I can't even read my own writing, it's so bad, look at this. No wonder, no wonder people tell me my handwriting is bad, not even I can read it. When fine plucking, when, when a tea plucker is fine plucking, what does it mean? It was either, does this mean plucking the bud or two leaves in a bud? Uh, the answer is actually, is actually plucking two leaves in a bud. So a fine pluck is exactly what we want to have when we make good quality tea, and that's two leaves and a bud. Question number 10, I believe, I've got it here. 
who is the world's largest tea exporter? And you had your options, India, China, Kenya, and Sri Lanka. Many of you went for Sri Lanka. The other votes were split between China and India. Um, but the answer was Kenya. So watch episode 67, because I talk all about Kenyan teas. I can't upload it to Instagram because it was more than 15 minutes long. But that was, those are your answers. We're going to do another quiz on Saturday. So every Saturday is going to be quiz night. Watch out on the Instagram because there's going to be a lot of content dropping this week that will have uh, all the answers for next week's quiz. If anyone gets 10 out of 10, I will send you, anywhere in the world, I will send you a packet of our breakfast tea, 100 grams of breakfast tea, 50 grams of afternoon, 50 grams of Planters Earl Grey and 50 grams of Planters Green Tea. If anyone gets 10 out of 10, DM me. I will send you those free teas for you to enjoy while you're in lockdown anywhere in the world. So pay attention to this week's Instagram. Also join me next, when? Friday. Friday, four o'clock, Facebook Live. We're gonna be doing, uh, we're gonna be doing a Facebook Live at four o'clock where we're gonna be doing afternoon tea. I'll be pairing our Planters Afternoon and a few other single estate teas to a few homemade treats that you can make at home, and I might even have a friend joining me as well. Let's see. Guys, have a great week, stay safe, and happy sipping.